So good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. Um, there you go. 71 in your AC room. Can't beat that. Tonight, um, we're going to talk about some of the basics of the 3-8 trap. And one of the reasons I want to do that is, well, I've been hearing a lot of things, a lot of questions, um, a lot of things about it. And there's so many um you know, we, we, we find something in the market that is actually pretty simple. How many of you would agree, um, as traders, we, we pick up something that's actually pretty simple and then we just complicate the heck out of it you know, with our trading, you know, um, <clears throat> it, it's not broke, but we want to fix it. We're pretty sure we can make it better. We're pretty sure. Um, if we just add this or that or complicate it a little bit more, it's going to solve all of the problems um, in our trading. Well, I've learned over time that, and, and believe me, I learned the hard way, that simple is better. That discipline in your trading is important. And if you can stop predicting it makes your life a whole lot easier when it comes to trading. So what is the 3-8 trap? The 3-8 trap is very, very simple. It is the 3 and the 8 exponential moving average. And that is essentially the 3-8 trap. Now we use a, a, a V-stop um, indicator here that is set to the 17 EMA. So I just dimmed it down, but this, this red and green dots is just basically the 17 EMA. If price is above the 17 EMA, it's green. If price is below the, the um, 17 EMA, it's red. So um, it's really that simple. So let's talk about some of the basics here in the 3-8 trap. And there's a few rules that I'm going to tell you about the basics. Now, first off, when we take a look at the 3 and the 8, there's nothing special about a 3 exponential moving average and an 8 exponential moving average. First off, we have to get past that. So many people get hung up on too many details in here. I get questions all the time. Yeah, but Doug, is it a three? Is it a three at the high? Is it a three at the low? Is it, what are you doing with it? I, you, the thing is, guys, I don't care. Pick something. And here's the other thing. I don't care if it's the three and the eight. Pick two opposing time frames of moving averages. I really like the three and the eight, but pick two opposing time frames of moving averages. That's all we're doing here. You know, for example, um, I get this all the time. Yeah, well, I want to I want to do the high. Okay, fine. Do the high. Does that really change your decision on a trade? I don't think so. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, we get so stuck on we we major in the minor things in trading off all the time. Um, traders overcomplicate um, everything we look at because we're technical traders and that's what technical traders do. But, and, and it's not, I'm not accusing anyone of anything except um, to say that I've, I've done it as well. I've made all the mistakes that a person can make as far as complicating the heck out of things. Dylan, yeah, 817. Um, here's what I would say about the three and the eight. Pick your settings and then use it. 
use it consistently. If it's 8 in the 17, use it consistently. That's all you got to do. Don't get too complicated with, with any strategy that you trade. Keep it simple. Secondly, when it comes to the 3 and the 8, does it make sense to everyone that if we're bullish, the 3 should be above the 8 and holding above the 8? Think about that for a second. When you're thinking about the price action of the chart, okay, if the 3 is unable to hold above the 8, haven't we lost upside momentum? Three falls below the eight, upside momentum has fallen away. And so we first need for any kind of a bullish signal is the three to cross over the eight and hold. Because if it can't do that, if the three is underneath the eight, our momentum has faded. And if you chase a trade up through here, you run a higher risk of it failing. Okay, and what I mean by higher risk, if you go back and you look at charts, and, and trust me on this, guys, I've spent thousands and thousands of hours studying chart after chart after chart and the price actions and tops and bottoms and reversals. But don't take my word for it. Go do it yourself. That when you cross up, after being down, if we can't prove to hold, those trades will lose 50% of the time. Does anyone in here want to have trades that lose half the time? Is that what we're here to do? As technical traders, that's, that's not what I want, right? I, I don't want a 50-50 trade. I want trades that give me better odds. So what that means is to get better odds, I have to have better discipline to actually wait for the pattern to develop. So the three crosses over the eight. We get a resting consolidation that pulls back and the three holds above the eight and buyers start to step up there. That trade wins and you can go back and count this off on any chart that you guys want to do. Challenge it. See if you can prove me wrong. That trade will win 70% of the time. Okay. Minimum of 70% of the time. Okay. Same thing with a failure. Short trade, three falls underneath the eight. We consolidate or we rally back to test the resistance. Sellers come in, that trade wins 70% of the time. Because all we're doing here is following price action. We're not predicting anything. So a, a key rule I want you guys to write down on this. And that is we wait for the buyers to show up. We wait for the sellers to show up to get short. We don't predict when they're going to enter the trade. It doesn't matter the symbol. It doesn't matter the stock. It doesn't matter the circumstances in the market. My rules are threes below the eight. I am not looking for a long trade. Period. Three crosses above the eight and hasn't proved to hold. There is no long trade. This right here is a reason to be watching the diamonds for a short. Until it can prove that it can cross up there and hold, then we can start thinking about it long. But so many of these relief bounces that occur when the threes underneath the eight turn into a short. Trendicator has nothing to do with it. 
Kev, we're talking about the momentum of these two moving averages. And if you want to use the 17, like um, Dylan's using the 8 and the 17, use the 8 and 17. But it has nothing to do with the crossing. I didn't say anything about the crossing was any kind of trade at all. It's not a trade. The crossing down, the crossing up is not the trade. If you go back and study any chart, you'll see this over and over and over. The crossover trade is just that first impulse wave to see if we're going to have enough momentum to hold. Okay, so when we get that crossover up, that's, that's all it is. It's a crossover up, could be nothing more than a relief rally, just like what this might be. Just a relief rally, and it fails. The only way we know that's not the case is if it holds. Okay, now this requires patience and i know this is really really hard it, it was really hard for me to develop the patience to wait for the trade particularly when we've got a market like we've got right now in the diamonds we're we're running up and oh my gosh the the bulls are the bulls are I, i'm missing out if you get the itch that you're missing out and you're willing to trade an intraday chart guys all you got to do is go to the four hour and find the three eight trap long right there. Okay. The thing about the three eight trap, guys, it doesn't matter what time frame you trade it. If I take this to an hourly, we could find trap setups in here on the hourly. Not very good ones, though, honestly, in the Dow very good ones there's one that's coming and setting up okay but there's your tr there's your trap trade there's your entry if you just have to be in trade if you're worried about missing out if you do change the time frame and i don't recommend that you do but if you do trade change the time frame then manage the trade from that chart because if you take this chart and go to the daily chart, you've got contradictions. If you take this chart and go to an hourly chart, you've got contradictions. Dance with the one that brought you. If it's the four hour chart that brought you to this trade, then dance with this chart. Okay. Multiple time frame analysis on something this simple will only make a mess out of this. Okay. Only using one time frame free. Not not sure what you're asking there, Mike. Um, I don't care what time frame you use. Just pick one. Seriously, I don't care what you choose. I trade weekly charts exactly the same way. Up and retest or down and retest? Well, for me, Stefan, <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you that John's wrong because I don't trade the way John does. Um, you can ask John that. But I can tell you I would never compare two different time frames. It is being recorded, Bruce. Because you just get too many contradiction, contradictions. Think about it. How many times have you guys seen a trade Go look at a different time frame. Don't take the trade, and that turns out to be an incredible trade. Show of hands, type a Y. How many of you have missed trades by doing that?
Nobody? Yeah. Anybody that's done it. Mrs. Trades. Lots of them. So pick your time frame and trade it. Just pick your time frame and trade it. And, and again, I don't care if you only use a 10 minute chart, it doesn't matter. Go to a 10 minute chart, the three, eight trap. There's your three, eight trap entry right there. There's another one right there. There's another one right there. What else do you need on the short side? There's a short, there's a short. I, I don't, I don't have to do multiple time frame analysis to make this work. And I'm going to challenge you guys to pick whatever time frame it is that you want. And I want you to go spend hours on this. I want you to go through, take the price action off the chart. And I want you to study the three and the eight. Go through as many charts as you want. And you're going to find what I'm saying. I don't. And as I said in the beginning, it's fine if you want to, but I say keep it as simple as you can. The more you put stuff, and I'm not using a pun here for your clouds, but the more you put on your chart, the more you cloud your vision of what's actually happening. And it is, and it's so simple, that, and that's the problem, Dylan. It's so simple, people, well, first off, they won't go test it to find out if I'm right. They, they don't want to develop the discipline to just hold a set of rules. Okay, a, a simple set of rules that it can't be this easy, but it is. Okay, just follow the price action of the chart. Pick any time frame and keep it simple. Now, you can save yourself a little bit of heartache. Okay, if you're underneath the trendinator and you get a 3 8 trap, because they do happen, 3 8 traps happen underneath the, the trendinator, you can make a rule that says, I'm just not going to trade that trade. There's just not enough momentum in it yet for me. And that's pretty much what I do. Um, it's a rare occasion when I trade that. Um, it's got to be a really stellar setup for that situation. Um, so the simple rule here, guys, is no crossovers. There is no crossover trade in the 3A trap. <clears throat> well, when the market is extremely volatile, then trade less. I, I mean, that's what I do. When you take a look at the VIX right now, Okay, and you look how much the VIX has elevated from recent here. The volatility is high. Every option you trade, you're going to spend more in time premium on those options because implied volatility calculates to higher prices for the options and wider bid as spreads. Okay, if if the market makers are raising the price of options, are your odds of winning that trade higher or lower? If the bid X spreads are widening out, are the odds of winning that trade higher or lower? So trade less. Or be even more stringent to your trade. There are good trades right now in the market there's there's no doubt about it there's good trades in the market right now so be very strict what is the trade that you want to see anybody like what Campbell soup might be doing here what are we waiting for here
confirmation buyers are showing up. That's a pullback opportunity. That's right. We're looking for confirmation that buyers are stepping up. So what are we looking for? We're looking for a bullish candle. And how can we find that without having to predict anything or staring at this chart? How can we do that? Real simple. We set a price alert on the chart and say, you know, if it pops up there and triggers that, I, that's, that's going to be a bullish candle, right? And as soon as that triggers, I'm going to run over and evaluate that chart for a potential trade. That's all I do, guys. Long or short, I look at charts that could be setting up. I set price alerts. There. CD. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the opportunity for that to trigger into a trade. Okay. There's a lot of them out there right now. Altria, Mo. Post. Yeah, GIS. Yes. Uh, trader, to answer your question, yes. Um, it, it all depends on how stringent you want to be with this. Um, I kind of prefer, and I, it's what I teach and what I tell people, is if the three is crossed down through the eight and pops right back up, it's no trade. The three went under the eight. Think about it. The momentum faded. And if the momentum fades and there's a higher high over here on the left side of the chart someplace, how many times have you seen well, just like here in the QQQ. Okay, we faded, we rallied up. Oh my gosh, it's time to buy. No, it's time to sell. Write these two rules down. Rule number one, I only go long stocks at or near price support and trend. Long stocks at or near price support and trend. So right here, notice right in here on the QQQ, three faded under the eight. That's not a trade I would take, but I would take this one. See how the fade of momentum here didn't produce much? When the momentum built back, it produced a lot. Don't you guys think that's important to pay attention to? Look at the momentum of that move. So I avoid those trades. Now, it doesn't mean that they can't be winners. I don't care. It's just my rule. I follow a rule. You don't have to follow that rule. I follow that rule. Okay. If we take a look at the diamonds here at the top, three faded underneath the eight. This is a very common pattern. We rallied back, but we didn't hold. You don't get trapped in that trade. Yes, sometimes it just keeps going. But again, this is a 50-50 trade. You buy that position, half of these will win, half of them will lose. I don't want those trades. I want trades that give me higher probability. Okay. So I, I know I sound like I'm hardcore or something on this, and I, and I don't mean to be hardcore. I am passionate about this because I do know how, how many times People don't hold the discipline. They chase into a trade on the crossover, and then they wonder what happened. Okay, well, first off, we only buy stocks at or near price support and trend. Okay, this is not at or near price support. 
this is at or near price resistance. We sell stocks or short stocks at or near price resistance and trend. I don't know if this is going to fail. I'm not going to predict that it's going to fail. I need to see sellers show up to show me that this is going to fail. And then I go short. Okay. And honestly, I wouldn't go short this because the three's crossed above the eight. Too much risk in the trade. So those two rules, guys, I only buy stocks that are at or near price support and trend and look for the 3A trap. I only sell stocks or short stocks at or near price resistance and trend. With the 3A trap short. And there's only two patterns that I trade in this. One is the pullback opportunity. One is the pullback opportunity. Let's go to something like Colgate. Okay. One is a pullback opportunity. One is the pop out of the box. Now the pullback opportunity is going to have more of that dip pattern where we sell back off and then all of a sudden the buyers will step up in here. That's a pullback opportunity. The pop out of the box pattern is going to be a pattern where the three crosses up and holds and consolidates. Nice little tight consolidation. Set your price alert. Trade. Okay. Pop out of the box, the true pop out of the box, as I, I've taught it before, requires no more than 3% from the high and the low of the consolidation. Okay. So if you measure from height of the consolidation to the low of the consolidation, I want that to be three or so percent, because if I set my stop loss below that, I have to think about the risk of the trade, right? How much risk am I willing to take? And if it's popping the top of that box and I get in and my stop loss is down here, I could have six, eight, 10% risk to my stop loss if I have a great big wide consolidation. Okay. The other thing about it is the consolidation needs to be um, four days. There's a there's a pattern, um, candlestick patterns called the mat hold pattern. The pop out of the box I say is four days, uh, four days minimum in consolidation. Well, here, if you'd have got in this, what do you mean just stayed in for those few days? It sold back off. If you'd have held an option in here, by the time you got into here, that they did a K on that option, you'd have lost most of your money in that trade. So are you a swing trader or are you a position trader? Well, are you a swing trader or are you a position trader? If you're position trading, longer term trading, don't use a daily chart. Okay, it, when I position trade, I use a weekly chart. Okay, so here's an entry. Here's an entry. That one's a little questionable. Here's an entry. Here's an entry. Now you don't have to use a weekly. You could go to a three day or something like that. If you want, slow the chart down and look for your entries. So you could get in here and as long as that doesn't break this trend, you can stay in the trade. That's a position trade, not a swing trade. And I trade position trades all the time. I love position trades. 
I can hold those for longer periods of time and notice the 3A trap works the same. It's just picking a different time frame. If, if you don't like a weekly, some people don't like the weekly because it's too long. Okay, so pick a two day, a three day, whatever works for you in the time frame. What we're trying to do is if you want the position trade, you smooth out that time frame so you can hold the trade longer. Okay. Make sense? And it doesn't matter. Um, I'm in Pfizer. And Pfizer is right at the cusp of pushing back down. I'm trying to build a long-term position here in Pfizer. Holding my upside trend, still hanging in there. Okay, so I'm trying to build a long-term position in here with the idea Pfizer just comes up halfway. And I'm willing to hold that as long as the trend holds. For example, on this weekly, it would have been possible. It's not something I normally do because of the volatility of it. But how many of you could have got short on Pfizer with a 3 8 trap weekly and stayed short? So think about those kind of things. Um, if you want to simplify your trading, and, and I'm all about being simple. The other thing is I want the odds to be in my favor. I would rather be more disciplined for the trade that sets up the way I want it than trading just because I need something to do. Something I say all the time RWO folks hear this all the time, is trade less and make more. Because when you trade less and you're more particular about the trade setup for the entry into the trade, okay, You don't take the drawdowns of all of these knee-jerk reaction trades that people are taking left and right every day. Always guessing and hoping and predicting. We don't have to do that. You see, <clears throat> institutions have all of the edge over us. They got they got 85 percent, 80 plus percent of the money that's in the market. They will decide when something trends not retail traders. When it comes to, to the market, retail traders are just kind of a pest to the institutions. Make no mistake about it, they want your money. But we have a major advantage over them. Institutions don't make trades for just a, f a few minutes or a few hours or um, a few days. They have rules and laws that they have to live by. An institution that moves people's money in and out and in and out and in and out of trades goes to jail for what they call churning, churning accounts. So we have an advantage over them if they show us where they want to go, then we don't have to predict anything. We just follow. When they show up and hold that pattern and the risk is acceptable, meaning that the pullback, the consolidation doesn't have a giant risk under it, and we can get into that trade, we just follow. Uh, rule number one, we only buy stocks. We only buy stocks at or near price support and resistance. Excuse me. We only buy stocks at or near price support and trend. 
we only sell stocks or short stocks at or near price resistance in trend. Okay. Take the example of Walmart. Walmart today is at price resistance and downtrend. Okay. Three is still underneath the eight. This is a classic short setup, just like it was right here. Three is under the eight. We rallied back to resistance and trend. And just mark it on the chart. It's not that hard to find. There's price resistance. The trade above, there's price resistance. Price resistance and trend. That's a potential short. Price support and trend. Up, three holds the eight. Our trend begins here. Price support and trend. Price support and trend. Price support and trend. Okay, this one was a little questionable because the three, well, no, it really didn't fade under, it just laid on it. Price support and trend. Distance and trend. Those will be your higher probability trades. Market. Okay. Freeze under the eight, and we're under the red trendinator. We don't look for a long trade. That's a potential short. The only way a short trade turns bullish is the three crosses above the eight, price moves up through, proves to hold the three stays above the eight, and buyers step up. That resumes the upside trend. Okay? Take any downtrend or any pullback in any chart, and it'll always be that way. We break this downtrend in here, okay? And we hold the higher low. I would have gone here, this one, three still underneath the eight. Right here, three crossed above the eight and held. Anything beyond that point where this trend holds is an opportunity to get into the trade. Over and over and over again, three. We cross up, we hold, opportunity in the trade. Hold, opportunity in the trade. Pop out of the box, opportunity in the trade. This is not a trade, the cross up, not a trade. Okay, price crosses down, three goes through the eight. We rally back to resistance. There's that trendinator there. We rally back to that 17. Three stays underneath the eight, we see Sellers coming in here. There's your first opportunity to short. Second. It repeats itself on every time frame and every chart. Now the trick of this is, and, and I, it, is, it, it is a little bit of a trick in the sense that you've got to look for the pattern setting up. One of the major problems that people deal with, and as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll bet if I look at most everybody's scans, everybody's scans are looking for is the big white candle or whatever color you have them colored. Any short trade is always looking for the big black candle. I don't look at trades like that. Okay? I look at trades that are coming into a setup. I'm looking for this chart before this candle happens. So I can see the trade coming, place an alert, and wait and see if it's going to go. That gives me a lower risk entry than chasing it after it's already moved. Okay. So I'm always looking for those trades setting up. I set alerts and I wait for the trade. Okay. Make the trade come to you. 
is what I say all the time. Make it come to you. Find the pattern as it's setting up and wait for the trade. Oh yeah, I don't trade earnings. Um, you know, everything that I've talked about tonight in these pattern setups is about improving your odds of winning. That's, that's all. I just want to have trades that give me better than average odds. Okay. Trading earnings. What about trading earnings gives me anything other than a 50-50 trade? It's a straight up gamble. Anything is possible. I don't trade earnings. Rules for selling. We sell stocks at or near price resistance, right? So if we rally up into a major resistance area in the chart we're in this trade, I want to be closing that by the time I reach here. If I'm swing trading, I close it. I, I do the same thing in futures trading, guys. I, I look for those trades on futures trading on 333 tick charts, very fast charts. I enter the trade and I've already got an order in here to close it at least three quarters of the trade by the time it hits that resistance. I take the profit, okay? If I have a big enough trade that I can scale a little tiny piece after that, fine but I take the profit and I always tell people a minimum of two thirds to three quarters of your trade, you take off work to reach goals here in the market. Don't get greedy because remember this pattern repeats itself. So you just wait for another trade. Okay. If I'm in a swing trade, Heading into that, yes, I close the trade. Think about it. I'm in a trade. I've got an unknown event that's going to go off. An unknown event that I can't protect myself. Okay. I can't protect myself in an, in, in an unknown event. Okay, so why am I trying to stick with a trade that's if I'm if I'm not in a profit and it's going to trade earnings? Why am I trying to fight it? If I take if I take the trade off now, I know I have an unknown quantity, either a little profit or a loss, but it's a known quantity. Okay, and I can avoid the risk. You know, the hardest thing, Rob, is discipline, right? Um, it's, it's always just discipline. I'm going to switch this over because I was fiddling around with one of the accounts here today um, in coaching. But if I go to an active traded chart, this is a 333 tick chart. Okay. It doesn't make candles based on time. It's based on every 333 trades. And you can see this is the counter. It is trading right now, but very slow tonight. Okay. But the same patterns are true during the day. You see the 3A trap longs right there and right there. You see the crossover up. And the crossover down. This cross down, even though we made a new high, look what happened here. It ended up failing. Okay, so cross down, there's no long trade here. There's no pattern here either. That's just a cross up. We're waiting for proof that it can hold. Okay, 
when you look over here, okay, any time we get those moves where we hold the three above the eight, there's an opportunity for a trade. And it's the same thing as any other chart. There's a cross up, but we don't get proof of hold. We don't get any clean pattern in here until here. I'm willing to wait for the clean pattern. The discipline of doing the job. It, sorry, it just ticked and so it moved over. Um, but the this is a 3-8 trap, guys. It's the same trade. And I do it on very quick charts. Okay. So I use the exact same strategy that I'm showing you right now for daily charts, for weekly charts, and for intraday trading. Okay. Somebody asked about Heiken Ashi. You can do the same thing with Heiken Ashi. <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. I didn't mean to sneeze. I apologize. Heiken Ashi, same. Uh, thanks, JC. Um, so pick a time frame. This is a daily. Pick a weekly. I don't care. Pick a two day. Pick a uh, four hour. I don't care. Pick a time frame and trade it. Okay. So remember with the 3A trap, cross up that can't prove to hold. Well, the cross up is not a trade. Recrossing above the eight is not a trade. I don't care how far the price goes. I don't care if the price goes from here and goes to the moon. If it doesn't come back and hold, there is no trade. Okay. Now I can choose on a chart. Let's use the QQQ this time. I can choose on the QQQ. Okay. I really want to be in this trade. Well, We've got a three crossing through the eight, and that's all we have. The potential of a failure, just like there, and just like there. So what do we do? If you have to be in that trade, go to a different time frame and find an entry. Four hour, there's no trade there. Hourly, maybe one coming. Fifteen minute. Uh, maybe there. Okay. So something like that should convince you that this right here, there's no good way to trade this yet in timing unless you go really fast. Well, you know, and here's the thing about it, Kev, um, and I know that's hard, but I don't have the drawdowns that people have in trades because I maintain the discipline. Do you want to correct your drawdowns? Do you want to improve your win-loss ratio? The only way you can do that is discipline. And that's just facts. People will, will say, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. i got to trade more. I have to trade more. And I said, well, fine. That's that's up to you. Just, just be prepared. You're going to continue to get what you get. To do the same thing over and over and expect a different result is what Einstein called insanity. Okay? <clears throat> I want a higher win-loss ratio. So I'm willing to wait for the better trade. Okay. Um, I didn't use a directional trade, so some of you may not understand this very much, but I didn't use a directional trade on NVIDIA. <clears throat> okay, but in, in NVIDIA, this crossover right in here that showed failure, I went short.
It's not because I'm any kind of genius. It's because I follow a rule. And, and those rules prove out. I mean, most people, because they only want stocks like NVIDIA to go up, won't even look at it for the opportunity to short it. Can't believe you shorted NVIDIA. It's the greatest stock ever. Well, okay. Notice in NVIDIA, guys, on the daily chart, you don't have to wait very long on a lot of charts. Yes, you get runaway moves from time to time. But here's your 3.8 trap pullback entry right there. There's another one there. This one you wouldn't have got into because of the gap. There's one here and one here. Okay. There's a short right here. And we'll know if NVIDIA is going to be anything good once it crosses up and proves to hold. The thing is, guys, the most volatile times that you're going to find in a stock, and this is really important to understand, the most volatile times, the most high-risk times in a stock is trying to pick the top and trying to pick the bottom. The bottom will always have bigger, wider swinging candles in here. Trust me on this. If this is going to be bullish, this will rest and pull back, put in a nice tight pattern, and an easy entry. I don't have to sweat it. Okay. I don't have to, you know, hold on for dear life. I can take a low risk entry. This is high risk. And it shows right here. Complete the bottom, hold the higher low, and notice how the price action tightens up. It's going to be that way on every pattern. You can be all kinds of volatile at, in different periods of time, but once we start the trend, price action tightens up. So discipline prevents me from having major drawdowns. I'm so disciplined in my futures trading that in my futures trading, my win-loss ratio is usually 80-85% win. Okay, because there, if, if it's not a trade, it's not a trade. I just, I don't, I'm not interested in risking money, but it's not a nice clean trade. Okay. I average $130,000 a year, usually trading futures, and I don't trade it very much. I only trade it when I'm not on the mic with and doing other things. I don't have a whole lot of time to trade it. Yet I can still find enough time that I can pull that kind of money out of it by just being disciplined. Trade less, make more. Okay? So when you see all these trades rushing and pushing and you know all kinds of stuff giving me these big stretches just know that if you wait if you're patient and that proves to hold up here you'll get a better entry into the trade the three a trap yeah um i i trade futures with the three a trap on the 333 tick. Now I can't tell you, uh, I don't, uh, for years and years and years, all I've traded was the 333 tick. So my, uh, I mean, that's what I do. But um, I know price action is price action and bull trends happen once the three has crossed over the eight and the three has enough momentum to hold. Price has enough momentum to hold. So let this volatility pass and then look for your trade. You'll be much happier in the position. You don't have to predict anything either. You don't have to pick the bottoms. You don't have to pick the tops. Oh, you can go with one minute. That's fine. Um, I, 
I tried lots of different time frames. I settled on 333. I went all the way down to um, one uh, um, 133, and it was just too fast. Remember, when I'm intraday trading something like, and by the way, that's the only thing I intraday trade. I don't intraday trade stocks. The only thing I want in an intraday trade, and by the way, and that's the only chart I trade. I don't look at any other futures chart, just that. For almost 18 years now straight. I've only traded that one chart. Okay. And so I kind of know how it moves. All right. And, and there's nothing magic about the 333 pick. Yeah, that's, well, you saw it right there on the chart. This is just a paper trade account over here, but right there, 333 tick. Time frame, tick, 333. But it doesn't matter. Pick any time frame you want to trade. Because it's just price action. Guys, don't get bogged down in a time frame or we, we, we tend to do that way too much. Again, I, I want to repeat this. Put the three and the eight on your chart and then shut off price action. Clean up the chart, okay? Shut off price action and see how many times when the three holds above the eight and the buying steps through that those are winning trades. Find out how many times when the crossover trade is all you have that it fails. And you'll see that I'm Right. And I don't care what time frame it is that you choose. If you want to trade intraday trade stocks on a five minute chart, do the exact same thing. Wow, what a choppy mess. This is garbage. Okay. Pick something and trade it. There's a 3-8 trap, 5-minute, right there. Textbook perfect. Right there. And that's the only one. NVIDIA. There's a good one right there. There's a good one right there. They're five minute charts. There's a good one right there. Just do the same thing, guys. I, I don't care what time frame it is. Pick a time frame and go through and see how many times it works. And can show yourself, don't take my word for it. If you just follow the rules, how you can improve your trading, you no longer have to predict you no longer have to have tons of different indicators on the chart. You no longer have to guess whether this is your trade or not your trade. Be as stringent as you want and be picky about the trades that you take. And you're going to find trades all over the market. Kind of got. It doesn't have to be the stocks that are the flavor of the day. The real high impressive stocks, the real expensive stocks. It doesn't have to be any of those. Simple Coke. Look for the trades. That makes sense, guys. Um, no, I really don't think it does because I mean, you know, on your, on your stock charts, if you're, if you, 
you're not trading options after you know after the market closes so no i don't think it does i don't think it's going to change anything um but check it out i just don't think it's going to change anything what's that on toss on how to do the 333 tick no, it's, just, it's, it's simple right there where it shows your time frame whatever it is go right there instead of time frame uh, you, instead of time, you pick tick. Yeah. Like, okay. But it, it doesn't matter. If you want to go time and you want to use five minute charts, do it. Three, a trap still works. Doesn't matter. Okay, don't don't overthink it. Um, keep it simple. Read the chart. Okay, trade the chart. If the trade's not there, move on. Um, and and I, I will tell you, it took me a long time <laughs> to have this kind of discipline. It it wasn't the easiest thing in the world for me to do, and it took a long time for me to just realize that if I followed my rules, I made more money. And, and the way you learn that, guys, is go back and review your past trades. Every trade that you make, you should record, okay? Your entry, your exit, the prices you entered, you exited, perhaps the, the signal, you know, it's a 3A trap with a bullish engulf or something like that. So you can track and you can go back and see. Um, by the way, I, I mentioned this on... Um, this chart let me go back here where we had inter you know price action during the day when I'm looking at this chart for a potential short okay I, this is literally what I do because this stuff is so fast guys I see this pattern forming so I set an order in here somewhere to go short when it triggers there when it falls through and as soon as I'm in that trade Right there is the next area of price support. And by the time I get there, I am selling two thirds to three quarters of the trade at a minimum. Usually, well, not usually, often all of it. So when I'm looking at upside moves in a chart, if I'm in a trade, if I get in this trade here or this trade here, and I'm looking over here, by the time I reach this resistance in the chart, I'm pulling the plug. I take profits. That's one of the reasons my win-loss ratio is so high. Because I take profits into my move, into the strength, and then I'm out. Money's in my account, I wait for the next trade. I don't let greed control my trading. Price action is king. Price is king. Let price be king. And you can do the same thing with stock trading. The exact same thing. If you find resistance in the chart, make sure you can, you're can. you taking profits by the time you reach there on a swing trade. Okay? Because it can hit resistance in reverse. I'm show of hands particularly with the volatility that we've seen right now in the market, guys. How many of you have taken trades, okay, that here recently you've taken those trades, you waited for the pullback to occur, you waited for the black candle to show up, and by the time you take profits, a great big chunk of the potential profit you had in the trade is gone. Am I right? And I mean, it just disappears like that. You would have made more money if you saw that resistance area coming or had a goal. And by the time you're there, you just close the trade. Whatever happens after that doesn't matter. Okay, just wait for the next trade. But you'll make more money 
by closing it into strength. Anything where there's a, a potential long, um, you know, I don't have anything in mind if you've got a chart that you want me to look at, but um, chart that, well, somebody mentioned so, SO, okay? This is a potential 3H trap. okay? Now, if I draw a trend here, Remember the rule, at or near price support and trend. Okay, so where's price support on this right now? It's here at the moment, but if that fails, the price support's here, right? And look how far away we are from the trend. So this may continue to go up. I'm not saying it won't. But really nice, comfortable trends do follow the trend. So this here, if I had a better trade, SO wouldn't be my favorite position. Because I'm away from the trend. A lot of these, and you've, well, you see them all the time. You don't recognize them maybe, but you see them all the time. Where the stock pulls back and you think, oh, now's my chance. And you jump on the trade and it rallies just a little bit and then it pulls back. Those are those trades that are usually extended away from trends. Okay. They are all over the place. Okay. And I'm sorry, I missed some questions on here. If, if it's not because it's not because I, um, if I missed it, um, please ask it again. I'm happy to answer it. Um, stop loss. Well, think about it. Price action is your stop loss. Okay. If I'm trading Coke right now, where should my stop be? If I'm looking to get long, where should my stop be? Isn't this price action telling us where the buyers are? Look at all those tails. The buyers show up there. So where's your stop loss go? Not there. It goes under that. It goes under it so that can be tested and bounce off and you're still in the trade. Price is always the stop loss. Okay, never an indicator, anything else. If you have trouble, use the volatility stop indicator. See that? Put your stop loss underneath that. I've got a whole series of videos on that if you don't know how to set it up. And if you look at that trade and say, yeah, but Doug, I can't take that much risk, then that's not your trade. Find a better trade. And it really is that simple for me. If I can't, if I look at the trade, I don't care what stock it is and I don't care who tells me it's a trade. I don't care if Warren Buffett knocks on my door. We're both from Nebraska. He just calls me Doug. But <laughs> knocks on my door and says, hey, buddy, you're out of your freaking mind if you don't trade this. If I look at the chart and it's not my trade, I don't care what he says. It's not my trade. Um, the 50 and the 200 can be really important, you know, um, because, and remember they, they work with the, the three and the eight. So take, for example, take a look at like BMY. Okay. BMY popped today. This wasn't a three, eight trap. Okay. It was not a three, eight trap. Okay. If we look over here though starting to be around a bottom breakout, right? It's above the 50. 
So what do I want to do? Oops, sorry, I think that was a two day chart. That it's already up there at the 200. So it was a round of bottom breakout here. Okay, on the daily. And the reason I'm confused on it is because I've been looking at it on the weekly, waiting for a longer term position in it. So it can be very important. Uh, the 3 8 trap will often show up in the round of bottom breakout pattern because it's just moving averages guys it um so it can be very important and you always want to remember the, if there's going to be two moving averages on any trader's chart it's going to be a 50 and a 200. okay you're always going to have better luck with an upside trade if the stock is above the 50. you're always going to have better with a short trade luck if the stock is below the 50. Okay? Because everybody's looking at those. So they are important. I just put them over here on another chart. If I need to confirm something, I come over here and look. Um, when I, I told you guys I like Pfizer here for a longer term, do you guys see why? It's a weekly round of bottom breakout. starting to happen consequently trying to set up a weekly 3a trap it's that one up here right okay so um, I think it is important to pay attention to those basics of technicals charts they they do make a difference in your trading and you'll want to pay attention to them those big levels it's a position trade rob and in a position trade like i said in pfizer i'm looking for this to come halfway back up a reversion to the mean and it doesn't matter to me if it takes six months or two years i don't care Halfway back up. I do that a lot. Okay. Tremendous moves like RWM. Um, it's too steep. It needs more rest. And all of this consolidation here is suggesting it could rest. I mean, I would be really surprised if it doesn't get stuck in this range here for quite a while. Um, guys, look at the whole chart, not the hard right edge. Okay, Very few charts, very few stocks can maintain a trend like that for very long. Oh, sorry. IRM. Oh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this chart. Um, on the daily chart, you've got a nice upside trend. Um, I, I mean, you have no idea how long that trend will go. So the next trade shows up. Look for the trade. Yeah, it's a real estate trust. So wait for the next entry and get in the trade. Yeah, I've made the mistake many times before saying a stock has gone up so much it has to go down. Um, and I have proven that wrong. I showed a trade today that one of my old longest trades that I ever held um, was in BDX. Weekly chart. And that was my entry. That was my exit. 2013 to 2019. This was one of my longest ones ever. Trend 
stay the trend. Okay. No big fancy in that position. Create trap right there. Walmart was a long trade, but not as long as this one. IRM on the daily. Um, looking in here, this volatility that's in here, I would currently, if I, first there's no entry right here, but if I were in this trade, um, I think my stop would be at least underneath here. And again, if you struggle with that, use the volatility stop. You can see that had so much volatility it turned red. It might be fake news, yeah. So. Um, that volatility in here is creating that trouble. So make sure you get your, if you're in it, get your stop loss down there and be willing to hold that because of that volatility that showed up here. And fortunately, a lot of the stocks right now are showing that volatility because the whole market is showing us that volatility. Okay. Um, AMD. AMD is a crossover up. Here's the daily. It's crossover up and that's it. It's not a long trade, it's not a short. It's closer to a short than it is a long. Okay. This needs to cross up and hold. And even once it does that, look at all this resistance that it has to get through going to be a tough chart for a while to go long. Okay. It's going to take a while maybe. And it doesn't mean you can't trade it long. Trap is the trap, but wait for the trade. Um, I would stay away from it. Crocs. This one you could technically look at as a one day pullback. And if you feel comfortable with a one day pullback, you can see there's a little teeny tiny trap right there. It's, I'll tell you, it's very difficult to catch those. And it doesn't have a whole lot of support. Okay. Um, if, if that is the trend, if that is the first high or low, that means your trend is like this. I don't think that's going to be the case for very long. Okay, so either let it pop out and, and rest or wait over here because it really could complete this pattern just like we see over here. This could complete the inverted head and shoulders pattern over here. And, and I don't care which happens, just show me the right pattern. Okay. So cross up and hold out here. Don't mind. Go ahead and cross out, break through that resistance and then hold back here. I'm going to get them about the same price. Wait for the trade. Okay. PLTR. Um, PLTR is a, I mean, crossover up, running like crazy. There's no way you can put a logical stop in price on that trade. It's a straight up gamble, if you ask me at the moment. If you're in it, Man, I'd be taking profit.
Yep. It's it's nothing more than defense stock now. Mostly a defense stock. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> wait for the wait for the pattern. If you wait for the pattern, you'll have better, easier trades and you'll make more money. If it doesn't show you the pattern, don't trade it. Well, and that's if you like the 3A trap. I mean, you guys can do whatever you want. I, I mean, obviously, I can't correct everyone's trading problems in, in an, well, here an hour and a half class. But I hope what you're seeing here tonight is that following something simple like this and being disciplined to the way you trade it makes a big difference in your trading. You shouldn't be wringing your hands all the time trying to pick bottoms and tops. I mean, if you need evidence that it's not working, look at your account. Isn't that enough to say I've got to do something different? That it's not working? Try something simple. E and B, I mean, are you in it, Stefan? I mean, there's no trap there. Broke out up here and running. It's going to run into some resistance up here eventually. And then a run this steep will have a longer term consolidation or a protracted pullback. Look at right here. Big steep run up. Long protracted pullback. That's the signature of the next one coming. Either a long consolidation or a protracted pullback. Um, X, yeah, X, we were looking at that one today. X is a potential drop long setting up. Yep. Okay, we've got price support here and here. So it may still have a little bit of time. Have to wait a little bit more. So don't rush it. Wait for the trade. Yeah, that's what I use, and I've shown a lot of them already. This is this is what I use. So here's Campbell Soup. Setting up a three E trap. Kinder Morgan. Possible 3A trap coming. Cross up, trying to hold. GIS. Resting right now, could potentially hold. Unmeet. That crossed up, too much volatility in it. It's not ready yet, and mostly because it's still in a downtrend. So I wouldn't trade it. There's just too much volatility. But if it popped up and held a higher low and, and smoothed out, then maybe. Um, there's X right there we just looked at. There's Hershey. Okay. The trades are not hard to find. Okay. And I didn't do anything to this scan. This is the out of the box 3A trap V stop scan. That's it. I, I don't change it. It's just set to the daily. And that's it. So, just to wrap up a couple things here. You guys, obviously, I can get a little bit preachy on this because I just know it works. And, um, and you don't have to like it. And <clears throat> it, I care about you, but I don't care if you don't like the 3A trap. I don't care if you don't want to have discipline. 
that's your that's your business that's up to you but if you're tired of trying to be the smartest guy in the room always trying to predict tops and bottoms and this and that and it's not working You might want to consider doing something simple. And if I can take this and trade anything from a weekly chart to a 333 tick futures chart and be successful with it, it's not because I'm a genius. Ask Mike, he knows me. I'm, I'm no genius. It's because I'm disciplined. Just know who I am as a trader and I follow my rules. Now, remember, the three inch trap comes with the full class on three inch trap, comes with a lot more rules. You could pick up the full class if you want. There's some documentation and stuff for it. But um, there's rules on the options I buy, there's, you know, the, the kind of things that I'm looking at, how to discern between what's a better trade and not a good trade, how to plan your stops, how to plan your trading. Um, yeah, I, there's nothing special about me. Um, um, thanks. Um, that's nice. It's just I'm a good teacher, but it really is. I, I'm a good teacher on this because it's all I do. <laughs> it's, it's what I do. Um, I do the same thing. It's the same trade over and over and over. It's, 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 it's always the same thing. Anybody from RWO um, that watches, when I take any directional trade, is there any question whether it's going to be a trap trade? It's always going to be a trap trade. Um, <laughs> um, it's just who I am. And um, I've made a career doing that. And, and if you like it, here's the cool thing about it. It's just price action. There's no secret. It's not a double top seat. Oh, man, if too many people know this, it's not going to work. No, it's going to work just fine. Because all we're doing is following price action. We're not predicting anything. That's it. The institutions are showing us where they want to go. We're just catching a ride with them. I don't have to invest my ego into it. I just find the chart, find the setup, and trade it. Okay? Um, it's pretty simple. And I like simple. Uh, volume, I really don't use volume, John. It's there to kind of truncate the chart a little bit. Uh, I mean, it is important from time to time, like when you get a move like this and it's an exhaustive move. Um, um, I can see when it's trending. I, you see I've got a 50-day moving average when volume is strong, when volume is weak, above that 50-day. 50, 50 but honestly, that's about all I use it for. Um, I'm not a volume trader at all. I'm a trend trader. Okay. And um, what's the volatility stop up here? This one is set to the trendinator. You guys, um, it's the volatility stop indicator. Here's the settings. Take a screenshot of it. And it's set to the moving average 17. Don't get too weirded out. It, it only changes from red to green. But notice when I turn this on, 17. it's a 17 moving average, guys. Um. That's all it is. It's showing me trend. Nothing, nothing more, nothing less. Okay. That's it. So that's a simple, simple thing. The volatility stop indicator, 
and I've got it set up over here, so I'll just go to this. The volatility stop indicator. I spent a year testing this, and here's the settings. And it's set to the main chart, to the price action of the chart. There's your settings. At least this is what I found after a year's worth of testing that worked the best. And if you go to my YouTube channel, um, click on playlist and go to um, a playlist that says um, strategy for consistent profits, I think. And it's just an explanation of the 3 a trap or the volatility stop, how to put it on your chart and how to use it. It helps you see trend. It helps you see support. It helps you see resistance. <clears throat> okay. But when we're in a nice chart, let's say like Coke, it's pretty easy to see where your stop is. Okay. Where to get in and how to follow that trade up with your stop loss. channel give me just a second I'll give it to you um, have a copy down here so oh that's it DB to it there it is once you're there, please subscribe. All of this stuff. Okay. And on that channel, it, like I said, and you just go to um, second. Just go to playlist and it is right there series for consistent profits right there and you go through that there they've been on there for a long time and it gives you everything everything about the volatility stuff All right, guys. Well, thanks a lot. I hope this was helpful, and I hope hope that this, you know, some of those questions are coming um, that comes up, and, and it's going to continue to happen. P people will say, "Well, the three a trap is about the three cross and the eight. You all know that that's not true. Nope. It can be somebody else's trade plan, but it's not mine. Okay. You also know that it doesn't have to be the three and the eight. There's no magic in the three and the eight. But you know what is a trade and what's not a trade. You know that the odds improve if you follow it. Winning. Okay, and, and I like better odds. So, all right, you guys, have a great evening. I was going to say afternoon. Have a great evening. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Wish you guys all of the very, very best. Thank <laughs> you.